Today, we will be discussing about the properties of the systems. Now, we have all this while we have come to know about the different inputs basically x of t in case of continuous time signal and x of n in terms of uh, in um, discrete time signal. Now, system as a whole can be represented like this. You have a system, you have inputs, it may be continuous time or discrete time and some transformation takes place on the input and you get y of t corresponding to x of t. If you give continuous time input to the system, the transformation is, uh, the transformed signal is y of t. If you give x of n, the transformed signal is y of n. That can be represented here like y of t is equal to transformation on x of t and y of n as transformation on x of n. Now we have different properties of the system based on input and output relationship. The first one happens to be linearity. Now if I take this, uh, in this case there was a single input and you got a single output. If I take more than one input, say I will take weighted sum of more than one input. If there was a one input x of t, I would get y of t. If there is more than one, in this case it is precisely two. So if this is an input to the system and then the transformation happens, the output what you get must be a into y1 of t corresponding to transformation on x1 of t plus b into y2 of t corresponding to the transformation which happens on x2 of t. So if this condition is satisfied then the system is said to be linear. Now to put it in words if the input to the system is a weighted sum of weighted sum means you multiply by a factor weighted sum sum you have a positive sign here so it is weighted sum of two or more signals that is in this case I have taken two signals so if the input is more weighted sum of two or more signal then signals then the output should be the weighted sum of responses to individual signals what is the response to x1 of t it is y1 of t but the response who gives the system gives a response that is a transformation happens on x1 of t you get y1 of t and transformation happens on x2 of t you get y2 of t now this is in the case uh, for the case of uh, continuous time signal for if you have a discrete time signal then the condition is a x1 of t plus b x1 of n b x2 of n the transformation happens and you get y a y1 of n plus b y2 of n. If this condition is satisfied for a discrete system then the system is said to be linear in nature. So the next property is time invariance. So from the first uh, property we have come to know that x of t undergoes transformation and you get y of t through the through the system now if there is a shift in the input by an amount t naught that means you have the input x of t and transformation occurs on it so you get y of t if there is a shift in the input then there should be corresponding shift in the output if this condition is satisfied then the system is said to be time invariant time invariant and the property is time invariance property now this is in the case of continuous time signal similar thing hold, uh, will hold good for discrete time signal that is x of n if you give as an input the transformation occurs and you get y of n then if there is a shift in the input of discrete time signal that is x of n minus n naught then there should be corresponding shift in the output as well. So if this condition is satisfied the system the discrete time system is said to be time invariant system. So the third property is causality. Now a system is said to be causal if 
output at any instant will depend on the input at the same instant or the previous instant. So you have the input output relationship that is y of t is uh, transformation on x of t. Now the system as from the definition the system is system is said to be causal if output at any instant say for example I will take instant y of 1 output at any instant if it depends upon the input at the same instant or output at one instant depends on the input at the previous instance say y of uh, x of minus 1 y of 1 is equal to x of minus 2 y of 1 is equal to x of minus 3 and so on that means output at any instant will depend on the input at the same instant or the previous instance but not the future instant that is y of 1 should not if y of 1 is, e, is dependent upon input at 3 see this is a current instant present instant and this is a future instant so if output at present instant depends upon the input at future instant then this is said to be non-causal system and for all these conditions the system is said to be causal in nature that is output at present instant will depend upon the input at the same instant or the previous instance but not the future instance. Now the fourth property is memory. Now from the definition the system is said to have memory if output at any instant depends upon the input at the previous instant or the future instant but not the current instant. So if uh, taking an example if y of t is um, transformation on x of t now if output at one instant as I have taken the instant to be 1 in the previous case I will take the same output at one instant depends upon the input in the past instant or yeah past instant that is x of minus 1 or y of 1 is equal to x of minus 2 y of 1 is equal to x of minus 3 or future instance that is y of 1 is equal to x of 2 y of 1 is equal to x of 3 y of 1 is equal to x of 5 if these conditions are satisfied then the system is said to have memory now when will the system be called as memoryless if input at one instant depends upon sorry output at one instant depends upon the input at the same instant if this condition is satisfied then the system is said to be memoryless here if this these conditions are, are satisfied the system is said to have memory memory system here the system is said to be mem memoryless that is if output at one instant depends upon input at the same instant then it is said to be memoryless system if output at one instant is depending upon input at the past instance or the future instance then the system is said to have memory the final property which we will be discussing is uh, stability now you have uh, input output relationship if y of t is output it is got by transformations on x of t now this stability is also named as PIBO stability or PIBO stability or whatever you want to call it as this BIBO stands for BI stands for bounded input and BO stands for bounded output now the definition is definition for stability is if you give a bounded input to the system the output and if you get the output which is bounded then the system is said to be stable now what do you mean by bounded input and bounded output see if I have an input if input is x of n which is 
equal to some value b of x which is less than infinity then the system uh, then the input is said to be bounded that means any value which is less than infinity if you provide it to the system as an input then that signal is said to be a bounded signal or if you give a bounded input and if you get a bounded output y of n which is some value b of y which is again less than infinity for a bounded input if you get a bounded output then the system is said to be stable in nature or it is said, said to be having bio stability now if for a bounded input if you get output to be approaching infinity then the system is said to be unstable in nature so we have studied these many properties under the properties of system head i'll be solving uh, problems related to this properties in the upcoming videos now for different types of signals like even and odd and the operations done on independent variable t and n please have a look into my previous videos thank you